Thank you. Did I get? Oh, I only got one. Oh no, that's it. There's only one. It's just been a. Where are? It's just been a. Um, I'm now nervous because everything that could that could play up today did play up today. Was it called owl something? Yeah. It's just owl. No, it's he's a Tasmanian owl. Because it's flex pattern. Yes, babe. I just have to find everybody. And I remember to turn the sound on. Waiting, waiting. Oh, it's very slow to... What? There we go. So we do that, and then we turn the sound down, and we see if we're the only ones here. And we're not. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I'm sure over time... It was, wasn't it, when we did this before? It was just so much easier getting ready at home to do the show. Um, yet today, no. Hello, Marg, hello, Helen, hello, Floria, good to see you. Good afternoon, Sharon. Good afternoon, Catherine. And um, good afternoon, Jenny. I know I have homework for you, yes. Hello, Rosemary, oh, hello, Karen. Jenny is here as well. Jenny Daniels is here as well It's Jenny Phillips. Christine Ellen is here. Hello, Ruthie. I only, <laughs> I only found your message about 30 minutes ago and only because my mother said, did you get your Auntie Ruth's message? I'm so glad you got them and we'll, we'll talk over the next couple of days. Everybody, it's Ruth's birthday on Friday. So happy birthday, Ruthie. I'll speak to you though. I will speak to you. Um, hello, Michelle and Marie Noel and Louise is here too. How are things going over your end of town, Louise? Uh, Margaret. Good to see you as well. Yvonne is here. Shirley. Oh, Jenny Peach is in the building. Lorraine's here. You're a stick. You're you're good, Lorraine. You just about need a frequent, a frequent watcher pass. I think There's no frequent flyers at the moment, but a frequent watcher. Um, Pam's here and Margaret's here. Michelle Fisher. Those bags look stunning. We'll have to organise a drop off from you. Um, oh, hello, hello everyone from Joan. Hello, Cecily. Denise is here. Hello Donna, just picked my hubby up from... Oh, is he okay Donna? I've got a funny story to tell you about people that have cataracts done. It costs a lot more money, or it can, than the actual surgery. And uh, it happened to neighbours of ours when Rob and I were newlyweds. We, we were befriended by a lovely senior couple across the road from us. And she went and had her cataracts done and Don was across the road whinging five days later because um, Cass, his wife was Cass, Cass could suddenly see everything, including all the cracks in the plaster work, the carpet was worn out, the windows needed cleaning, and it just meant another six months of torture for him and a lot of money to fix up the house because she could finally see all of the faults that needed it. Um, I'm glad you liked the blue show. I tried to be a little bit colour coordinated today. I can't promise I will pull it off every day but um, yeah I'm at home so I can steal things out of cupboards to pop up so but I don't want anyone to be feeling blue today any roof hello Diane and um, Michelle is here too Michelle asked me a question and yes I'm working on it um good afternoon if, to everybody my goodness I could just keep I could just keep going Linda's here, Kathy's here. You've you've all been just so lovely too uh, about the website and patient with us. And Pauline, what do you want? You're telling me I look good. I, I don't, but thank you very much. I I will take that. Um, and and wear it. There is no exciting birthday tomorrow. Only Ruth. Hello, Caroline. Hey, Meg. Well, if you've always wanted to make that quilt, Caroline, we're going to have a chat about that um, today. Anne's here too. Shirley, Pat, I'll just keep Sue. Oh, Sue, oh, she's here. 
I think I better get started. There are just so many people here. We better we better get going. Today I wrote the subtitle for today is uh, by request. And what that actually means is I started thinking about what I was going to do today and there was lots and lots of requests for different things, for quick little demos, confirmation website has got kits on it, all those sorts of things, explanations and things. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to run through a few things, a quick couple of demos, but cover off some of the questions that people had. Things that you're waiting on, I mean, I might just double up on a demo because I haven't finished it to put on the website as well. So we'll run through a few things, but first of all, um, I tell you, I'm just looking at the screen, I'm really happy all the cameras are working. Someone who happens to be husband of the decade transferred all of my studio stuff, all the cameras and everything, which is now quite a big task. Remember, Kate and I started last year with just my phone, it's got a little bit out of control, uh, moved it all home. Um, it didn't like being moved home, so it, it, it took a bit. It just took a bit to get everything to work again correctly. Buttons may or may not have been knocked in transit, all that sort of stuff. I'm very happy it's behaving. Now, overhead is, what did he give me? Number three, which I've got to get used to. They're the other way around. So just just before we uh, we kick off a few fun things, and a bit of show, a bit, it's a bit of show and tell, Hello Tina, you've snuck in when I wasn't looking. Cass, do you want my time? Cass, sorry. Cassandra's in the building and remember, by request, Cass will be joining us very soon. We're going to trial it today or tomorrow, aren't we? We're trialing Jewel. No, that's another thing. <laughs> We're going to trial a little bit of a split screen interview with Cass, who's my graphic designer. She is saying no because she's in lockdown and wants to get her hair done. I'm saying yes because I'm saying yes because um, she's got lots to share and we've got a fun story to tell about us and how we do things. So if I can't get my hair done, you, it doesn't matter that you can't get yours done Cass. So we're going to do it together. Um, yeah, my hair was tomorrow originally. If I had a Learjet, I'd fly my aunt down as my first and foremost hairdresser. But alas, I do not. So I'm going to start cutting that fringe pretty soon. But uh, you got to wear that. You got to wear the 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 um the lockdown hair with pride. We learnt that last year. All right, this box. This box is important. What is in this box? This box contains, and I haven't even looked. So this is kind of like a mega mega show and tell. This box contains entries for our Australian textile exhibition for the bag challenge. So you do all have your bags ready, don't you, to win a amazing Burnett self-threading overlocker, um, a complete Burnett sewing machine and embroidery package. <laughs> now, I, this is not really fair. Does that hide? Yeah, I don't want you to see whose they are. Oh, don't want you to see whose they are. Um, or a $1,000, and I mean a 1000 gift voucher from me. So I haven't looked in this box. But Cass, if you want this top, I agree, it's not a bad fit, and um, I'm going to copy it on my new Benina overlocker. So did you like that? Do you like little soft cell there, girls, on the side? My new Benina overlocker. Oh, that is just fantastic so it's free to enter you can enter as many <laughs> you can enter as many many times as you like um, it's got to have an Aussie theme now sharing keys you dropped me I've got some beautiful bags that Steve picked up from you and that's all cool there's some Aussie ones in there but the other ones that you gave me we are going to show in the next two weeks which is just another another whole massive story altogether let's just look through these first What's in this one? So I don't care if you made your bag yesterday or if you made it five years ago. If it is an Aussie theme in fabric or design in any way, and it doesn't have to be mine. What's this one? Oh, now those that have come to our exhibitions over the years, you're going to know whose bags these are. Look at them. Oh my goodness. And they're all in their own. See, someone's, someone's earning brownie points with me because... 
they are all in their own bags and she's not going to be having kittens because um, this lady doesn't do Facebook or social media. Oh, I don't think. Oh, I'll know in a minute, won't I? Oh, 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 look. <gasps> Steve, Steve. How good's that? That is a very, very impressive kookaburra. And this has been painted on with Illumina paints. Oh, that's good. That is very, very good. Mixed with batiks. Yum. So that just gives you, oh, I won't take the third one out. I'm going to, I'm going to make you wait to see them. Um, and if you're wondering how the exhibition is going to work, we will be showing some of the bags uh, every day and we will have some of Eileen Campbell's quilts every day. I uh, had an email from Rachel Daisy yesterday, so I'm going to get back to her. She's going, I'm guessing it's not happening because we're all in lockdown. Yes, yes it is. So she's going to send down uh, some quilts for me to show off to you. And uh, back to Sharon's... That's it, Lisa. Don't mark the paperwork up. Back to um, Sharon's bags. If I have some work here of anybody's that's not Aussie, it will be shown in the next couple of weeks because we'll be, Cass and I think we are, dual streaming through us, through Chandler's Cottage for you, but also through the Love and Hugs from Australia Facebook page. If we can't do it at the same time, it'll get uploaded to ours as soon as we're finished. If you want to join Love and Hugs from Australia Facebook, just go on and make a request and the admin girls will get you on before we get started. But we start that tomorrow. Oh, and I'll be doing little evening demos. First one in the morning to say hi and then little evening demos and things each night. And it's good to do it at night time because then it will be evening here after dinner for us. But it will also be um, sort of morning about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning for UK and Europe where a lot of the members in that group are. It's a huge group, there's about 17,500 members in it and it's um, looked after and hosted by 16 Australian designers. So I'd get yourself on there because there's lots, lots and lots of stuff if you haven't been on there. Um, everyone's saying hi to each other which is good. Oh hello Suzanne. Avonsley, safer in my sewing room than walking through the trees. Yeah, yeah I bet it, yes, no, no walking through no walking through trees please it is super windy someone said oh no what happened something happened oh i don't know i've lost i've lost the train of what you're all talking about i'm sure you're all under control um Donna, get on with it. What do you mean if you've got a chance? Of course you've got a chance. Everyone's got a chance. And it's not viewer's choice this time. It is, it's close judging, but they're not going to be able to get up close and personal with the bags because it's virtual. So I'll be sitting down with like a FaceTime meeting with each of our judges, which is Eileen Campbell, Maria Waters, you know, like just normal people. Uh, and Nathan from Benina. Nathan Hammond, the state sales manager. So they are going to be judging. There are fights on at the moment about who gets to judge first because someone's got to choose the first one. And I and then the others will know they can't choose that one to win the next prize. I think Eileen gets to go first because she, it's her exhibition as well. We're getting all of her divine, divine quilts. Steve's going to go and pick them up, I think, on the weekend. Maybe. So that they're all here. Okay. Now, um, we have been very, very busy beavers getting kits done and new things up onto the website. Not necessarily new, new, but new to the new website, which takes time and effort on Steve's half and me running around deciding what goes next in our limited time that we have each day. So, um, I showed you these the other day. I showed you these. And these are now up. So in kits on the new site under um, what's understanding cool other things? Did you fun say? other projects. Fun other fun projects. That's a good name that. Hey, was that at late at night with a drink that we came up with that name? Probably. <laughs> so these are now up. And you get the kit to make the three lanterns. Plus you also get a fat eighth of each of these fabrics. So I've popped in these three. 
I know they're not really exciting they are but they are nice neutral colors so you can choose to use them or you can use your own fabric and pop them in your stash but we've popped those up there's not a lot I think there's about eight I, I, I really really want to keep these he's naughty keep these up um, because I think with Christmas and everything coming up these make the best presents but also there'll be new fabrics come through along the way that we want to use. I've also got the lampshades happening. It's just really difficult at the moment with lockdown. Our supplier or distributor that we get these from is five minutes from us, but we can't go in to get them at the moment. So we've just got to negotiate that. I'll pop these up here. Put them up in here. Oh, I thought you did. It secured the shelves to the wall. Right. Maybe I've knocked, oh, I've knocked the wedges out from underneath. Let's just do that really carefully. Um, it's fine. I won't, now that I know, <laughs> now that I know, now well, that's what that bit of rubber's for. It's still not enough, is it? But if I don't, um, thanks, Dan. Right, now I know that. Okay. Now the other kits that we did Sunday? Sunday. So these are back up. These are available again. So we've cut fresh kits. These, um, the Chinatown tote does come and go in the jade because it's sometimes quite hard to get hold of this super duper bright gold metallic. Uh, I don't have anything in my stuff that goes with it. My gold fabrics are too yellow. Uh, Fairy frost is too yellow, but this stuff is really, really good. You can see we just use it for the pin tucks and the handles, but it does make the bag. So we've got this one back up in the jade. So the pattern actually comes with the black and gold one on the um, yep, on the cover. But we've got it made up, so there it is in the... It's a luminous in the afternoon sun coming through the window. Look there. With the boys on either side. Um, every time I go to cut these kits I always think why why does it take a meter of the dragons when it's only this bit here but because of the way that I've laid the dragons out on this fabric thank you Bernadette I'm gonna have to do my walls more often and take notice now because you're actually noticing what I've put in to fill the gap around the quilt <laughs> um, I always wonder why do I need so much of this when I'm only cutting these but you need to fussy cut them the way I've designed the fabric the, and the way that we cut it I've got to make sure you get these guys so the easiest thing to do was to just do the whole lining in it as well so you actually get a meter of the dragons in the kits and then you can fussy cut out your panels for the front and the back um, and then you can use the rest for your lining so those that's those two and they're back up they're $40 a kit Steve I think they're 40, 40 because they don't, somewhere in there, they're around that price, they don't have bag furniture, so therefore I always try, if we're not putting bag furniture in, often the kits will be a little bit less, depending on how much fabric, and as you know, we don't put our bag batting in to our kits, it's always been too bulky. Moving forward, um, we'll have a look at actually starting to add bag batting in with kits, if I think it's imperative that you have a particular type to get the look um, like our little makeup purses so we will do that there is a limited amount of bag batting in yard pieces uh, up in Habby at the moment if there's not a lot there I'm sorry grab it into your cart if you want to actually that's a question Steve if someone puts something in their cart does it pull it from stock or only oh oh that's a bit rough <laughs> so you can put it in your cart, but unless you, what does Adam say, okay, unless you check your cart out, um, it's not guaranteed to be yours. So if you want to put stuff in, Stephen actually did this really cool thing. Ruthie had, sorry, not Auntie Ruthie, Ruthie KWA, had um, two orders in, and you managed to combine post or something for her yep so we combine the two waters together and then we upgraded the post to express for her <gasps> oh that's pretty cool so you can if you've got a decent order and you're worried you're not going to get something you can check your cart out and steve would do that for you on thursday 
done. Asked me to do it tomorrow. I'm still learning. I've still got my L plates on. Cheryl has a late pass. Um, we will accept that. Hello, Jeanette. Uh, I love it when you apologise for being late. Oh, the putty cat finally settled down and went to sleep on my pile of quilts in the corner. Aww. She's been running around like a hairy goat today. Now, the other kits... Oh, just quickly. The other kits that we've put back up. Steve? Yep. Did I leave in the kitchen the kit of this in the Nouveau, the pink and grey? I've left it somewhere. Oh, beg your pardon, beg your pardon. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. Uh, first of all, under events. Workshops and events on the website is all the info you need to enter the bag challenge. It's all there. Super easy. There, It's not like, no offence, Murray Lee, it's not like trying to get a quilt into showcase. That's it. Quick. Done. For free. You've just got to get it to us. If you mail it to us, we're going to mail it back to you with tracking. So you've only got to get it to us. We'll work that out later. Now, um, I had limited yardage of the Melbourne Kaleidoscope come in last week. It's the sample piece that I get to approve production before I say, Kanichiwa, hey, all good to go. And, um, and then they start bolting the fabric and then put it on a boat or on a plane, wherever it's going. So this time I said, please don't send me half a yard Please send me 10 yards so that I can get new projects done. I've got a few I want to do for Love and Hugs over the next two weeks. And I uh, had an urgent order for a customer who's been waiting forever who had prepaid for an order. So I wanted to honour that. And then, all of that aside, I had enough to make up just for kits. Now there is more coming, but if you were really, really keen on getting your hands on one of these kits now, they are in. Now... Hello, Kathy. Kathy's saying we all need to go to Brisbane because it's all beautiful up there. We, Kathy, we know, we know it's beautiful in Brisbane, and um, trust me, we would if we could. We'd be there. I'd be, I'd be in an Uber to the to the airport right now. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I'd be going to Newcastle by Friday if I could. I'd be going to Newcastle because you know, family first. Okay, so this is how much I love you. See the bag? It's missing its buckle. What happened when we ran out of buckles, which can never happen on the new site, ran out of kits, um, and I was waiting for new ones. Someone had placed an order, and I was so, so desperate to get the order out. I stole the buckle off the actual sample because I knew it was going to take no time at all to put it back in. So in the instructions, it tells you, I've been able to do that because it was sort of sitting still gathered a bit. Um, there you go. You actually do a little tacking stitch. I think they're half an inch apart across the belt. And then you put the buckle through, get it where you want, and you take the tacking out. You also get a magnetic snap, which is not on the shop sample, to go on the front. So we've got four, we did four of these. Four, I'm sure it's four, three, four. Not many. And that's just to tide us over until the stock arrives. And I expect to see the stock late September, early October. So it's a little bit away. Um, and then the thing that will determine how many we can do moving forward will be the buckles because I can't get any more. What we've got is what we've got. Anyway, so that's that kit. And we also did the Pink Nouveau one. So that one's done as well. So this one's got... So now you're onto the grey instead of the black. And you've got the teal fans. Four. Thanks. And someone's trying to ring us and I didn't undervert the phone. Um, so you've got 
this one and then the teal fans and then this is your lining and you get the same buckle in the kit now you'll notice on this cover here there is a different fabric to the teal fans this sample was made before we actually had the teal fans so now I run all of them with the teal because that's kind of what it was made for like I've run the green ones on here so we've popped up those so there's only about I think there's about four Steve said for now and then uh, yeah moving uh, later in the year we'll be able to do some more of those so I'll pop those under here while actually I want to grab this back I had a find I had a big big find for me um, and the find is linen French linen now I have plans for this but I am going to get Steve to pop it up on the website as well look at this stuff is just beautiful so it's dressmaker width I didn't give it to Steve to pop up quickly today because it, it's a different weight of course to a cotton so you just need to weigh it and check it and also it look 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 at that that is just that is yum I'm very happy with that in in fact I think it will go even you'll get a lot more contrast if you want contrast with the ivy ivory background I think the ivory is still sitting at work um, but it's just lovely with that so you know what I'm doing don't you I'm going to do some paper doily work and use uh, English paper piecing pieces new ones I've got that are going to leave gaps in between and then we can embroider onto the linen so what I'm going to do with the linen I'm going to ask Steve not to put it up in half meter lengths because it is expensive uh, it's it's beautiful it's 54 inches wide it's 100% linen and it's it's coming from France it's $60 a meter <laughs> but when I do kits with it I'll be working that in it's going to work out a really good price within the kits but I'm going to ask Steve to pop it up in, in 30 centimetre increments because it is a higher price point we can do that so um, I'm going to pop it up in 30 centimetres and that way I know if you decide to make something like my um, paper doily club cushion with the pentagon shapes in the big sort of circular doily you, if you buy the 60 centimetres you're going to have what you need to make a European cushion to the size of that project so but I just it's just yummy um, and yeah I got a pale pink one too so we'll get we'll get those up um, the olive green that we used to have I'm getting more of that as well it takes ages to get here I ordered that on a spending spree day out with Margaret Upston from Margaret's Fabrics hey flick I haven't got to the flick project yet um wow so we went in lockdown so maybe may april may i ordered that so it takes a long time it's come on a boat steve made good coffee pop that there so it's safe we'll pop that under there so the other one i'm very excited i got the tracking this morning for mr fedex who is bringing the strike offs from japan of the new border stripe in pink and teal to go with all our spring colors so I'm hanging out and I will show it to you as soon as it gets here I promise I'll be sharing unless it's a complete disaster oh no I'd still share that uh, because it's a learning curve for everyone isn't it so this is this is the saddle satchel obviously very very similar very similar to the buckle bag it's just in the features and honestly if you've got when if you get the buckle bag project you do not need to buy the saddle satchel pattern on its own you would you would be able to wing it i'm sure you'd be able to wing it you just take that bit off that i put over the top and you're going to put on buckles instead so i'm sure you could manage that this was the sample we do not have any she says holding it up of this at the moment but I always always have to keep a little bit back when I know I've got new stock coming I like to do a new project so I have a larger piece in the cupboard I didn't know I had this bit as well I did a double stash so I'm not going to put it up for sale by the meter because honestly there's not 
there's not much here. We're going to pop it into these kits because I'm pretty sure some people were waiting for them. And it takes half a metre, so two, three. I reckon if I do a bit off, there'll be four kits. So I want to sew these new buckles on. The, the original one was when we used to buy our buckles from someone else. You can see they're just a little bit longer. And, and they're a little bit flimsier with this buckle. They were great, don't get me wrong, they were really good. But I'm a bit biased, I like my new ones. So I will um, switch them over. Might not change the photo before the kits go up. But I'll get four kits up um, with Steve as soon as he's made himself lunch. We'll get those up for you. And then again, if you are happy to wait, please be absolutely assured that we will have another some will go to Natasha so we'll probably have another oh no just a mere 400 meters arrive late in the year because I'm not sure yet if we're going to have to go back and do another strike off of the pink and teal let's hope let's hope not um, it's a slightly darker teal than the background on the floral I sort of had to balance it so that if they get put together we've got enough contrast. Okay, I'll pop that over there. Um, Quilter's Life. Quilter's Life, Quilter's Life. Things Lisa hasn't done her homework on. Her book cover put up on a Quilter's Life. Not done and put as a free download. It's cut, it's, it's there and I've cut out another four to make presents for people. So that's on my homework list. Um, I'll come back with that on Thursday. And if I haven't done it by Thursday, I will make it with you on Thursday. So that will go up as a, a just a paid download. So you'll be able to... I love the way you're starting to do it. So you actually can make something within five minutes of deciding. You can go on, print out the download, pay for it, print, done, start making it. Quick, quick, quick. Really easy. Now, the other thing too, Therese Parry, who is... I don't know if she's here today. Hi, Marg Evans. Hello, Jenny Wren. Hello, Diane Nugent. Hello. Oh, Cindy's in the building too. Awesome. Um, Therese asked if I would send her a copy of the little floral, what do we call it? A flower press pattern because she wanted one. And I went, well, Therese is in a quilter's life. And it'd probably be a really nice thing to put in a quilter's life. So I just uh, got it all ready with Cass. And that will go up in a quilter's life this week. So if you are not a member of a quilter's life and you're trying to work out if it's worth the value of $10 a month, then please um, have a look because every time I put up a pattern, it's one that is available for sale on the website as well most of the time. So this one is going to be $9 to print it off and use yourself or if you're a member of a quilter's life it's only ten dollars a month and you'll get at least two or three patterns and recipes and demos and stuff so um i will show you i tell you what this old internet and facebook at the moment leaves a lot to be desired okay uh this is can i do it okay there you go so this is a quilter's life um, thank you to everyone that joined the other day. We got we got new members, and it was very very exciting. It was just lovely. So, um, thanks for joining, and you will find there's a heap of stuff in there for you straight away that you can access and have a play with. So, there's recipes and demos. The demos are up for the last applique sampler. There's a mass of stuff in there. So please um, have a look. And that if you put in that is actually a website code. .podia.com. A lot of people are not sure if that's the place they need to go to or not, but all the info's in there. And any time that you need any help with it, with your membership or anything, um, then please, you know, just email us and Cass, I like to say I will help you, but usually Cass will help you. Um, Karen, the bag is a Chinatown tote. So it's in patterns and it's also in kits for you. Please tell me if you can't see it and we'll quickly fix it. But if you put Chinatown into the search window, then you're going to find it. Okay. Felicity Bonner, come on down. I think you're in here. 
so on Saturday, was it Saturday? It was Saturday, wasn't it? Oh, he's. <laughs> this is where I have to keep confessing I haven't sewn his eyes on um, this one. There's my fat owl. Look how fat he is. Look at him. So he's got little eyes. We go on here. So we'll <laughs> sit there crooked. Is that better? That's a little bit better. So Felicity sent us this little pattern to make up for fun. Um, and we have made it all look flash. Ignore. Oh, listen, mate, keep your. That's it. Well, you're going to need your cataracts done as well. Oh my goodness, I need to, I really need to sew them on, don't I? Okay, so Flick, we've made the pattern all look very flash. He's a Tasmanian ale, of course, because Flick's from Tassie. And it mentions her in there. And you can see this was the final draft. So it's got all my scribble on it. But Cass finished that off for us today. Um, the template is now in it as well. And it's now up as a free download in the pattern section on no, free patterns. It's under the free pattern section on the website. Free downloads. It's under free across the top. So Steve just put that up and the template's in there too. What I was going to say about the template, my owl ended up really fat. So if you don't want your owl to be that fat, you just need to narrow off the template. That's all, that's all it means. So you just, instead of that, you can just bring it in a little bit and he'll be taller. You might even end up looking like a penguin if you do him in black and white. Um, I've popped up the kits as well. So I don't know if you remember. I'm so glad that cameras work. Okay. Oh, hello, Petra. You're here and Deborah's here as well. Awesome. Catherine Dyer's here. Okay, so that's what you're going to get in your kit with and I will pop in a copy of the free download pattern. You're getting a whole heap of beads. They will not be loose in the pack, I promise. This is the beautiful woven wool that I used. And you've got wool flannel. And you've got hand dyed felt for the eyes and some beads. I've given you enough to make a parliament. So you can make five owls. So you have a group which is called a parliament of owls. So, Steve... Are the kits up for Flix Owls? With a link to the wet, to the pattern? Awesome. Okay. Love it when a plan comes together. Okay. Right. Um, thank you for your patience. The origami kits. Paid downloads and hard copies are now available on the website. So there are two different colors. That's the, um, the blue one, and the other one in Melba and green is up. So that's done. Have I finished all my homework yet? Nearly, I'm nearly, nearly, nearly there. All right, we'll do this first. Um, oh, I can't remember now. Someone asked me to demo. Can you put the air con on please, Steve? Or open a window. Um, that's going to be fun in summer from this room. I'll need to get the aircon in here. Someone asked me to demo our little charms purses, and I can't. I'm so sorry. I don't remember who it was now, but I'm going to do one today because we've got new bag furniture for the um, for the charm purses. And this is them. So these are the new... Oh, that's not a new one. These... Has it got the new... No, that's all right. These are the new ones. Can you see what's on them? It's a kitty cat. We got happy cat ones. Oh, chill, that's fantastic. That got there really quick. That, that, that's, I'm real, that's good. Oh, I'm very impressed with how quick that got to you. Yep, 
you, I would get your seedlings planted first too. So now we have happy cat ones. And this, this is what they look like. Can you see them? I think you can. Look how cute are they? Very, very cute. So they're antique gold ones. I've picked up the wrong one at some point. That's a silver fan one. They're antique gold. They're a bright gold. You might be able to see this one better. So um, yeah, this is it. this is next on the list for uh, Steve and I to get up. There's a little gold one. So if you've got lots of little cutesy oriental prints as opposed to really kind of traditional floral ones, these these will look really nice if you've got sort of indigo blue. If you want to pop one on a little piece with some sashiko, actually that'd be really nice. I'll just pop this in here. Okay, I'm going to use the gold one. If you if you haven't seen if you haven't seen the fan ones, oh, I should just show you because these need to go up as well. We've only had these available um, in the kits, so they're now going up on their own. So you'll just be able to buy them and use your stash. And look, see that's the little fan. So the fan comes in gold as well they're just they're just a nice just a nice little thing I think they're a nice little thing to have in the stash so if you do make a big bag you're going to have enough left or, and you've just got that bit left over you can just whip up a little purse to go in it that matches at the same time so that's on my list to do now one thing um, thank you thank you thank you to everyone who has just signed up for the applique sampler because we did that little extra demo about it on Saturday with a little bit of needle turn so I wanted to show you where I'm at for this month for the girls in the club we're up to needle turning this month and this is the blue gum branch that we are branch 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 that we, that we are doing so this is the whole idea no stitches on the front all the stitches are on all the cottons on the back see that so this is what my girls in the club have learnt to do they have learnt to first of all do a really good invisible slip stitch and now they're going to take that on to the next step and needle turn, literally use their needle to turn the seam allowance under as they slip stitch. So that's what they're up to. This wasn't what they did in the first month, they've worked their way up to this step. So I just know they're going to take it with gusto, 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 and they're going to do it um, with great confidence and skill because they have gradually been working their way up to this step. So for those that are starting the club now, Jill's just got her pack. So if you missed Saturday, we've got a special group of 10 girls that started last week and they are their own little set on top of all of the girls that started in February. And then we're now taking intake for mail out at the end of September, around the end of September for a new group. And then that will be the last time we offer it with the patterns, uh, sorry, with hard copies and mail out and fabric. So just because I think everyone's going to go a bit loopy in this house if we do it for too long. All right. Um, so the other thing that I mentioned on Saturday was Special limited edition little kits or new ones for our makeup bags. Do you know, honestly, the other day I want to take my makeup to work to um, get ready for the show afterwards so I didn't look like a train wreck after playing in the warehouse all morning. I couldn't find anything to put my makeup in. There were three at work, weren't there? but there was nothing here. So one, two, three. Now if my name was Natasha from Natasha Makes, I would have today's sample made up to show you. I don't. But this is what the ne next kit will look like and this is what I will be sewing uh, again before Thursday. But I got Steve to put the kit up because I know a lot of you, oh sorry, have been waiting 
for it or have asked for it. So this is the new kit. Really, really different to the first lot. So I've taken the cork out of the equation. This time you've got um, Hampton stripe for the lining. So the lining's going to come as a separate piece. With this, you are going to have a fair bit left over, which again, you can use to make a little coin purse, a trinket purse, one of those little charm purses if you wish. You're also going to have a bit of the main floral. Now, the base of this bag is denim. So this is this great new washed quite stressed denim. It's 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 quite rough and textured and I really really like it. Um, so we're going to have this on the website by the meter too. This is 54 inches wide. So I've popped this into the kit. This is <laughs> this is the zip I used for the photo because it was one I had in the cupboard. You're actually getting a better coloured zip that's really going to contrast. You're getting this coloured zip that's in this one and the reason is but when I lay this out, this is the beautiful Japanese. I'll show you this a bit closer. I don't know if you can see it. It's, it's got a slub, what they call it, which is not a very nice word, but it is the word they use. It's a slub, so it's a woven with the metallic. I haven't seen fabric like this for quite a while. Um, and it's not going up by the meter. This was just a limited edition piece I was able to get my hands on. So I'm pretty sure we had this way back at Chandler's Cottage in Beaumaris. Anyway, that's what I got hold of. So, then you're going to have this coloured zip and you can see why. You see why it's going to pull up these sort of yellows and things, but also it will mimic these gorgeous little handmade labels. So you get your little, you actually get two, one for each side. So you get two of those in the kit. And then these are our new tassels and they're rust red and they pull up this beautiful pinky rust floral in there and then you need your batting so they are the new kits Steve has put them up this afternoon and it just looks like the kit but you also of course get a copy of the pattern in uh, with it and if you're in a quilter's life you've already got the pattern because this is one of your free patterns that you get I don't know if Cass and I have done this one ready to go up as a paid download. I'll ask Steve when he comes back if we have. If not, it will be. Uh, because a lot of you have got a stash, you just want to use it. So you just want to go, I just need that pattern. Get it, click it, download it, print it, and you'll have it in three minutes. So um, I will check. I will check. So much has been going on. I know that sounds pathetic, but I will check. Okay, that's that. That's that. I'm glad. I'm glad I've got all my homework. Now, in terms of demos, I need to run through these for you. And I'm going to do something for you today that has been a special request. And it's a 3D flower technique. And it's hidden under here. And I'm going to show you. But first of all, I forgot one thing. I forgot this. I forgot this. Um, right. We have now run out of this, which is the dark blue. See, it's the theme of today. We've got the blue out. So this blue is different to this blue. The blue in the origami kits that you're going to get is this one. So this was part of what we called the oh was it lake house i can't remember anyway it was it was the color the color number on the end of all the codes on this fabric range which had the blue and gray in summer palace or still does um is 24. so this one it's code on the end is 24. So that's that one. It's got a little bit of green in it and quite a yellowy cream with the silver. And then this one was sort of more brighter and this brilliant Ming Dynasty blue. And you'd be surprised. They're actually the same, actually the same coloured flowers. They just behave differently because of the way I set the screens up to print it. Anyway, this pack has eight different fabrics in it. 
and you get five or seven and a half squares of each. So you've got that one there. The fans are in there. Lattice. I've snuck in some Blueberry Robert Kaufman Regent Fusions. You've got the dragon print. And you know, it's just cut. It's just cut where it falls. So you've got 40 squares all together. What this will go with, I said, at least what am I going to do with it? Well, there's a lot of options out there at the moment. If you're in a quilter's life, stuff we've done. If you've got the kids pack with uh, the free download for the kids pack pattern that's on the website as well. But what I am doing as well, if you have ever bought one of our Charm Square packs, which um, there aren't any on the website at the moment, again, because we ran our stock down before we did the changeover and uh, we're in the process of getting them cut again at the moment. So if you have one of the Charm Square packs or you have seen them, they come with a pattern included called Charming Australia. It's essentially a free pattern that goes with it. So we're actually going to put that in with this pack. It's also going up as a free download on Chandler's Cottage for you so you will have it readily available. So this this actual pack is on, I'll do, this, I'll do the side view. So this actual pack with all of that I've popped up and it's $35. So you've got all of those. I, I've i only got, this is the Panic Buy Spiel. You know what a Panic Buy Spiel is like, don't you? I've got eight People say they've only got eight when they've got eight made up and they can make more. I can't make any more. There you go. There are eight. So I I will be honest, these have been sitting a while because I was going to make a quilt with them with the Charm Square pack. Left it too long. All of the blue blossom is gone except for what's in these packs. So we've got about eight of those. So if you would like one, they are they're up. They're not all the other things we're supposed to be putting up, but they're up. So that's that's real. That is why the set is blue because of those. Now, someone asked me, and it was all to do with uh, Quilter's Life, and I just have way, way too much stuff lined up to show you. Hang on, it might be under here. No, down here. Here we go. Do you remember I mentioned the other day with that drop dead gorgeous new ombre from Banatex that again for the girls in the club I am doing the maple leaf block from uh, my Baltimore which is hidden underneath the white wool wall. If I open up the pattern, didn't think about that. Okay, so this is this is the original here that's in the Baltimore pattern. Stevie, yeah. the, are the Baltimores up? He's checking. But this is just one block and I decided I would like to do this as a project in a demo for the girls in a quilter's life with that ombre. So you can see here their pattern has been drafted up with all the instructions. Uh, I've just got to do, I've just actually got to sit down and film it and do some for it. But in that conversation with one of our club members, she said she'd always love to see how the 3D ginger flowers were done. So I thought, let's do, let's do that as a demo today because the ones that are coming up in the applique sampler that go on the little Melba fan and a couple of other spots, similar but different. So a similar shape petal, but I use them very differently. So that's, that's what I want to show you. Now, if I hold up the corner of the quilt, I just had a mental blank on which side it's on. I think it's under this one. Sorry? Japanese and Oriental are up. They are? Oh, thank you. So can you see that? See that there? See these flowers? They're the ones that I want to show you how to do those. So they can be used for lots of different things. I've used them as ginger, but you can actually hang them upside down and use them for fuchsias as well. Lot, lot, and you can use three or four petals as an orchid. So there's lots of irises, lots of uses for them. So I'm going to show you how to do those. 
<laughs> and the the reason that this is up as well, just because I wanted blue today, but this quilt was made before the Oriental Baltimore. So this is the stitchery version to an extent of the Baltimore. So this existed first in pink um, when I first did it. And then, see there's your maple, there's the maple leaf block there. So it's it got taken from a stitchery into the Baltimore. And we did exactly the same with another one called Japanese. So there's a Japanese gold work and a Japanese Baltimore. Um, so let's do, let's do this. Oh no, did you see that? Did you see that go over the edge? Ginny, would you be kind enough to pick, no you wouldn't would you? Hey Steve, sorry I need you I dropped something. Okay, so we need two, I, I like re, two really good contrasting colours to show off, um, show this off. Okay, so I'm use, going to use yellow and red like they are on the quilt. Under, down there, I dropped a bit of template plastic that started its life as the body of an owl, a Tasmanian owl. And it's now going to be a ginger flower petal. Okay, so we need a template. And if you've heard me talk a lot about um, 3D flowers before, we always talk about leaving a really good width at the base of the petal so that you can, if you start feeding her chicken, she'll never go back to cat food. <laughs> Oh, oh. you lucky pussy cat! All happening off camera here. All happening off camera. So usually when we do petals, we really want to have that width at the base so we can gather them all in and get a really nice bunch up in a 3D effect. So if I was to pull up for you, let me just pull you up another one out of here. You see these flowers here? Uh, yep, you can. So see how they're quite frilly and they're really full bodied. That's what happens when you gather up the base and you have to allow extra width to do that at the bottom. So we don't want that to happen with these. We actually just want to fold them and use them as they are. So I'm just going to wing it because you know I love to do this. And um, yes, it was Ming Blue in the pre-cut, Stephen. What's it called? It's in pre-cuts, that blue pack. <coughs> Sorry, I've got my mouth That's all right. So... I want a petal that's sort of, actually, it's almost the same shape as our owl. I sort of want this shape. And I know I'm freehand drawing it, but look, you know what? I've done this so many times. Can you see that there? That's the sort of shape. I don't need it super wide at the base to gather up. So this is the, that's about the shape. That's also just so you know, a really good shape for flannel flowers. So you'll be able to find it under uh, Summer Palace pre-cuts oh. or pre-cuts and charm packs. Did you get that? Pre-cuts, charm packs, or if you go into Summer Palace, because it's all Summer Palace fabrics, it's in there under pre-cuts too. I haven't had a chance to put up a lot of what they call tags or pre um, keywords yet for you to search by but I will I will get those done for you all right so this is this is the shape I want if you've also watched back on um, this one. if you've also watched back some of them where I've used plates to do curves then you could also do this with a plate to get that curve it's just a case of it's just a case of having a play. This is where I go to the pattern and actually see how close I am. <laughs> just you know, it would be really good, wouldn't it, to see how close I got? Gee, that last print run was nice. So where are we at? Oh, these four symbols on the quilt 
and on the blue work one and the other one a spring summer autumn winter in case you're wondering quilt assembly wisteria here we go how do i do not oh well not perfect might round him off a little bit just take a top off just so it's a little bit more like the one in the brochure there we go right so i'll close that up now these are actually going to get sewn together if we weren't using batiks then i would say put them right sides together but because we're on batiks it doesn't matter both sides are going to be fine I'm going to do one. She's not eating, is she? Oh, she is. No, she had up to. Oh, those two. Well, she's a girl watching her weight. She knows not to eat too much. Okay. So we're going to pop these right sides together. This is the whole trick, remember, with 3D. Don't cut everything down with a seam allowance first. Draw it up and sew it while it's all still in one long piece. You know that's what I always say. I'm not going to change it today. Really, really important that you do that. Otherwise, your sewing machine, depending on what sort of machine you have, and if you've got your straight stitch plate on or not, will eat it for breakfast, lunch or dinner. I um I love the, I love my sew line. Oh, Barb Clifford, Steve's got it on the table. I'll talk to you about your threader in a minute. Um, Eve, I love these, and I, I had them in three different colours, but the one that I've brought in to use in here is the trio one because it's got three colours in it. It's really cool when you're drawing around. Uh, things that have got different coloured florals in them, you can switch it over really quick. How, sh how many will we do? Because you've got to put up with me sewing them on the machine too. I really, really want... I need six. While I've got this all in one strip, remember too that little trick that we can do, and I did it even with the ginger jar we were bagging out the other day. You can pre-piece one of these strips, or both of them. So instead of just using all yellow, if I wanted a really dramatic effect, I could have actually pieced the yellow together with a little piece of black or purple or something in here. And then all of my petals would have a different colour at the base, or at the tip, whichever you prefer. I'm going to cut this down a little bit, because I'm just going to do the six. these out of the way and you know what I need to do now I need to very as graciously as possible lift a sewing machine up from underneath the table which has been buried under bags all my girls in a quilter's life how are you going with your squats <laughs> they make all the difference when you're doing something like that don't they right uh, a foot So a little bit of a race on with the walking with me and Margaret at the moment, I can tell you. She's got a big farm to walk around, so she has me at a little bit of a disadvantage, uh, but I am managing at least 30 minutes a day, even if I have to go super early in the morning. I'm going to pop him on an angle so that you can see what I'm doing as well. Now I've got white in here. Oh, good afternoon. There we go. What have what have I what menagerie of threads have I got in here? Looks like we've got brown on the bottom. Oh, we've been sewing ours, haven't we? I, uh, I will confess, I've been using my 
720. So I'm going to take this out. Just check this guy's all okay. Yeah. thread it up when you whenever you move your banana um, it, it's it's just it's worth saying every single time if you move your banana like I did today in a hurry uh, from work and I just decided to switch to the 475 because I haven't got home um, yet a big enough table that I can sit everything down each end like I've got at work. So I've still got to get one of those. So I thought I won't put my big 720 up here. I'll bring in the smaller one, which is why I have the luxury, as many do, of having a large and a small banana. But if you decide to move your machine, please don't ever panic when you turn it back on. And it makes that noise. It just means you've knocked your bobbin winder. And I will say that because a lot of people ring and go oh, I've broken it it's making funny noises you've just knocked the bobbin winder that's all you've done all right so the best thing to use which I do not have on <laughs> and I'm not going to go and get it is a clear foot or an open toe foot so that you can see where you're going um, Rob has brought as I mentioned another camera which is going to allow me to have one right over the top on a boom so you can see exactly what I'm seeing as I sew. Uh, so we're working on it. What you would usually do as well um, if you're on a machine with a knee lift, this is a great time to use it just for lifting up and down. I haven't got mine on. And use a nice small stitch. Don't go too big. Keep it nice and tight because you're going to put a fair bit of pressure on these shapes when you cut them out. And this is a time, don't do what I'm doing. Use a nice matching thread. Because you will see it on the edge. If they're not all exactly the same, either is Mother Nature, so don't worry about it. And you can see I'm not bothering to cut in between each one. I'm just racing along the bottom, leaving that bottom edge open. And the reason I don't need to worry... Okay, that one is really wonky. Um, the reason I don't need to worry is because we're not going to turn them out like this. We're going to put our forceps in and turn them out over our forceps. And Steve's uploaded the larger pair of forceps now onto the site as well. They're under the first bit that's general tools. And you're all being so good and patient, you know, every now and then I f we find a little bit of a hiccup where we haven't got a drop down menu right or something. And none of you were saying anything, we were just saying nice things and we find things and go, uh oh. But we are getting there. to if you have a 475 and you would like you can upgrade your foot pedal did you know that you can upgrade the larger machines the fives and the sevens come with a foot that enables you to do needle up needle down with the front of your foot like this so if you wanted to get the next foot up just let me know um, because we can organize one for you I think there are about a hundred but honestly how many times do you just want to go foot up foot down 
put up, uh, sorry, needle up, needle down, needle up, needle down. It, it, it does make, it does just make life a little bit more pleasant if you're doing a lot of speed piecing and turning corners and all those sorts of things. Okay, we finish, that was it. You can go to sleep now. why the little ones are nice they're still heavy but then they're, they're nice because you um, just pick them up with one hand oh there's stuff here on the shelf for there's stuff here on the shelf for next week I should show you you know how I used to use Steve's cutting board that he gave me under here. All right, I just want to give this a quick press. Oh, if it was plugged in. Okay, let's let, let's just uh, talk amongst ourselves and I'll plug this in. I don't know why I didn't put it on because it's not the beeping one uh, from work. Just while that's heating up, I got in you know that I've decided to become quite a substantial pocker stockist of creative grid rulers. I'm not, you know I'm not, I haven't been the gadget girl, but I wasn't pressured, I was convinced to try them. And I do really like them. So I'm getting in. Um, Steve? It's disappeared. Uh, I'm getting in these. Well, I've got these in, which are the Roundup tool. So I, I, I want to give you a little demo on how these work, but I'm not going to because I didn't bring home my mini rotary cutter and you really do need to run your mini rotary with, with your going round curves. Um, you know, I really want to practice what I preach with those. But these are set up to give you beautiful curves for um, rounded edges on quilts, for circles, for orange peels, lots of different things. So I've got those in. I'm going to get Steve to put them up. And then I've got, still in their wrapper, they come, look at this, they come, these guys love shrink wrap. They're obsessed with it. Just, uh, this is really not good for the environment, is it? I'm about to give up if I can't get in on this turn. There we go. So these are, again, they're non-slip. So the reason I want to get into them is they're just making, making life so much easier for me on my hands. I'm not having to put as much pressure down when I'm cutting and my wrists are not getting sore. That's what's been the huge difference for me. These ones are the half 60 triangles. These, like the other ones that we've already got, come with a pattern to make these beautiful pinwheel star quilts so we've got to get into these so that comes with that and then I'm going to give you a really good demo on these ones so that's um they're on the shelf and they're there for next week because I want to get I want to get a couple of samples made up for you um and not again not just in just not in my fabrics I'll probably do one in mine but I'm thinking batiks and ombres I really am for some of those pinwheels. So let's do this. There we go. Now we've got some steam. Grandy, did I say hello before? If I didn't, I do apologize. And also to Anne Beecroft. I sort of get a little bit overwhelmed when you all come online at the same time and I, and I get nervous if I just um, switch off and pretend for a while you're not all there. So um, I'm sorry if I missed you before. So that's nice and flat now. It's really good to press it first because it sets your seams. So if I show you this up close. Is you can see it's nice and flat. I think you can even see that the lines on there, but we're going to cut them out. Are you back yet, Stevie? Can you come and shut the curtain for me? 
the girls and I are copping some rays. Right, now we're going to cut these out with a really scant eighth of an inch seam allowance. And we can do this, that one, I think, I think it's that one. Is it that one? Try it. Are you trying to get this? No, I've got, I've got this. I'm trying to get rid of this. Um, I can do it because I've got a nice tight, that's it, thank you. I was wrong, thanks. Nice tight stitches and I'm also, let's face it, using a really nice tight weave fabric as well. So we'll cut these out. Again, if I wanted to add a little bit more embellishment to these, I could have done some stitching onto one of the bands of fabric first. I could have painted it with some alumina paints or some um, ink tents and set it. Oh, I got really excited. I, you know how I went decided to go back to designing and I had a bit of a a bit of a fail, it didn't happen. You set aside a couple of days and something gets in the way. Um, it's on again. It's on again Saturday. I'm going to try again for a day design. And my ink tense pencils are sitting there and my fingers literally, my palms start to itch at the thought of painting, which is just so weird because never born an artist or decided to, but when it comes to designing fabric, I just need to do it again. It's been a while. Okay, there's my six cut out. So we're going to grab our forceps. So these, these are the ones that we've had up for a while and there's a secondary one you'll see up now that are longer and they've got a slight curve on them. So they're going to be really good for turning through long, long speary leaves and, and longer skinnier petals as well. So with these, you're going to pop them up inside and your tips up here. Make sure that you've got your thumb with the handle sitting up on the top. If you turn this way, there's nothing to grab in the tip. If you turn on side like this, you can pick up the tip and then you pull the petal over the top. Then you can use your forceps, which have got that nice rounded tip on them to push them out into shape. So you can see the difference. If we were going to just do a normal turn through, we'd be doing this, and then those stitches on the ends are going to start to unravel. Let's get these through. So I'm, as I said, I'm making these up as a ginger flower today, but they can be used for so many different flowers. And you could, look, you could gather up the base on these. This is about the shape that I'm going to use for a 3D wax flower uh, on the applique sampler. And the base will gather, not much, so it won't be a full body one, because on that one we gather up and we turn them over down back into the center. Get this one, a bit of a push. And I suppose I've been as boring as I possibly could be today with these colours in that they are both batiks. But if you mix and match your colours up, uh, sorry, your fabrics up, that's going to work and give you a really nice, impressive look. Um, Steve and I are just going to finish off getting kits and all of our heavy up. He's got a big tray over there of all of our hand needles today and a few other things to go up. Then we're going to start on pre-cut packs so that you're going to be able to buy um, like the Charm Square packs or un sort of more um, unusual unusual width pieces. I Everything seems to come in a two and a half inch or a ten inch square or something like that. For this sort of work, I like the idea of doing a pack of all the Northcote Shimmers in a four or a four and a half inch strip and do that as a big flat roll because then I know it's the size you need to do little snowball blocks from our free kids pack pattern or make a whole heap of flowers or use it for um, paper piecing with our lattice work octagons, all that sort of stuff. So that's that's what, I re Stephen can you write that down? What you have for lunch? It smelled good. Toasted Sanger. What was in the Sanger? 
Did cheese. you do my chicken cheese and pineapple? No, I didn't use the pineapple. Oh. I did chicken cheese and gherkin, and then chicken cheese and burger sauce. Chicken cheese and burger sauce. And didn't do the chicken cheese and pineapple. Okay. Oh, well, I can, I can only, I can only lead you to the, um, the perfect sandwich. There was some discussion about Nigella, Nigella Lawson starting to use Vegemite in a sandwich or something the other day. It was going viral, and um, we were looking at unusual sandwich fillings. These are going to get a really good steam now. Uh, and you know, don't be, sh don't be, don't. I won't be offended if you hit them with the starch either. If you've got floppier fabric or softer fabric. Anyway, Dad said, "Have you seen this?" And I said, "No." And he goes, "Do you know any good?" I think it was a Tasmanian thing. I said, "Yep, yep, Tassie mummies in Battery Point at about midnight." Rob, Rob, in uh, my induction was bacon, cheese, and banana. Um, open toasted fingers with hot chocolates with mountains of marshmallows and I had to be talked into it but it's no it's not really any different in a way to sitting down and doing prosciutto cheese and a quince paste it's all about the sweet with the savory the salt and the sweet together and uh, man they were good it was in a little, you know, cottage that was built in the late 1700s or something, and it was just, uh, it was magical. But we'll have to do them. Who said that we were pagan eating cheese and raspberry jam? Someone said it. I can't remember. But it's no different to having a flash cheese and quince paste. It's still cheese and jam. go so they're all done so we move this out of the way because we don't uh, we don't need the iron again but I do need Steve Steve help 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 pin cushion from next door I'm slowly slowly going to get I have a trolley there's a trolley that is supposed to have everything in it now that I need it's got the clover iron it's got an applique mat Oh, we're using this next week too. Um, the hot press uh, rulers that, I shouldn't shake it, should I? That was a bit rude. The hot press rulers, not the long narrow one. This is the one with the curve that's set up to do pockets, but we're going to use it for a bag flap. Okay. So we are, there's probably a needle in this disastrous pack somewhere. What you got? It's not as good as the origami kits on that's, the website. That's not the but it's got nothing in it. Oh, you actually need Yeah. <laughs> I need all my mushroom, one of the ones that's got needles in it. He bought me the he bought, he bought me the Quilter's Life crazy paper pieced one. Not the not one that actually had any needles in it. Oh, look at them all. Well, this one, this one's in the club as well. That one's in the club as well. We were learning all different techniques. That's my felt one. What's this one? Oh, Linda Curry made me this one. This is the cutest thing. Um, I have to just have to show you. The precious things that you get given. Ooh, not that ugly pin. Get that out. Look at that. Isn't that divine? Very, very lucky to have such gorgeous, talented friends that um, share their craft and give it away. Amazing. Right, are we ready? Ready. I'll just, uh, I'll just thread up the old needle. And I think we're going to do this way. Okay. So with these, we are going to pleat them. I've got my number, my normal piecing needle here. Oh, what? Felicity, what? Yeah, okay, Canadian pancakes are the same. I thought, yeah, Canadian pancakes, um, Salamanca Market, 
bacon, pancakes, strawberries, and they did come with a glass of Tasmanian champagne on the side from memory. So, we're going to fold like that. Now, the other trick with the ginger flour is not all of them are the same length. I lay them out like that. I'm going to take the first two. I'm going to chop about three eighths of an inch off them. I don't remember what it is in the pattern, so don't quote me on that. But for now, I'm going to chop that much off. Then the next two, I'm going to leave the same length, but then these two at the end, I'm going to just take about a quarter of an inch off. And that's going to give us a flower that will round, that will round out. Oh, I love this. I haven't done this for ages. Okay, fold in half. No, my eyesight's not that bad, so just my glasses are filthy. <laughs> taken them off and I can see better oh my goodness so fold two in half and then you're going to slot one inside the other you right angles is what you feel like doing is my bunny ears but you actually want to angle them up a little bit and then with a good strong piecing needle tack them together Hello Anne, did you get my message I sent back to you? Yes, of course you can join the Applique Sampler Club. It's all set up in clubs on the website for you. Now, I cleaned off our back kitchen table, um, which doesn't get much use. It's more of a games night family dinner table, so it's not getting much use at the moment. And I laid out the Dancing Butterfly Block of the Month quilt. Finally, I think all the fabrics have, have arrived. That's been a six month weight so I can get that one going too. So I'm folding all of mine in with the yellow on the inside but if I was doing two to go on my quilt I do one with the yellow on the outside and one with the red just to have that little bit of interest and contrast. So let's fold another one and this one which side am I on? will now go on this side. So I'm actually, I'm alternating. I'm alternating which side I put them on. So again, I'll tack. Do you know, Steve, I rang Anne to see how she was going with her Q20. Do you remember when you, you dropped it off in those last precious hours before lockdown for her? Mm -hmm. and, and I rang her two days later I spoke to her two days later. She'd already mastered the the, the tacking stitch. She'd done a quilt. <laughs> I was at a ring to say, do you, do you want to learn how to thread it? And she'd already done all this work on it. Very impressive. Okay. So now we're going to put one on the other side. So you can see how it makes a difference to have the two big ones. Sorry, the two short ones and then the two big ones. Now I'm going to put this one on and then we're just going to stop and have a little bit of a review. About how to use it. So there we go. If we wanted to stop here uh, and use it as it is, we could. And these would make just the most gorgeous little fuchsias. So upside down and we've done a lot of our ruching demos and things before. You've got them saved on A Quilter's Life. They're on YouTube as well. So if you were to come in and add a big ruched frilly bit in here, you've got yourself a fuchsia. And also, check this out, these will sit up. So you can fold these up and tack them. So they don't have to all lay down. Um, then if I hold that that way for you, can you see if you actually, instead of putting the opposite side so one one way and one the other if you ran them all facing the same direction like these two and keep it going then you've got yourself a beautiful um, bird of paradise flower so you can do them in orange and purple and get yourself some gorgeous flowers that way as well so you can uh, use them like that also you can lay them down so you get yourself a throat going down this way 
and have one or two on the other side. If I just pop that one up that way and then you can get yourself some really nice irises. So maybe have three on this side, so you'd have another one on this side and then have one at the top and you can make yourself some bearded irises also. So there's lots and lots of ways that you can use them and interpret them to make different 3D flowers. Um, not everyone is into 3D quilts and I get that because they really are something that needs to go on the wall. But when we are having a lot of fun making handbags and cushions, pin cushions and presents for people, I think they hold a lot of, give a lot of impact and a lot of interest to pieces. Okay, so I'll just pop these last two on. So remember these two are a little bit shorter. I only chopped a quarter of an inch off these ones. But can you see that? It gives you a little bit of a rounded shape in doing that. That side. Now, Steve, Barb Clifford. Yep. Um, so that link is up for for the needle threader. Yep. Okay. Can then you pass me the needle threader? Thank you. So I'm just going to sew these a little bit more. Barb, if you are still watching and you haven't given up on me, <laughs> um, Steve's made sure we. I had a go at trying to get the camera set up today to do a demo for you for using your sew line needle threader. And Rob's bought us another flash new camera, but he didn't buy the ones the same as what we've got. So it just has a little bit of a, a teething issue. Um, making it compatible to go with the other ones and it's going to go here so that you can see over my literally kind of exactly what I can see that's what I needed to set up to do this demo for you today but what Steve's done if you go back into this product on the website in Habby in the needle threaders are they under needles and what are these under are they under needles and pins I don't remember. Um, if you go in and find it again, in the description for the needle threaders, um, Steve's put in a link. They are in there, so under needles and pins. Yep. Makes sense to have the needle threader in there. So there's a link that you can click on. It will take you to a really, really good YouTube demo from the guys at Sewline. Um, and um, I hope you weren't offended that I asked you which one you had because honestly, when I first did the pink ones, I didn't realise there were two different sizes. So there's one for size 9 to 12 needles and then there's the next size up as well for large ones. Which, which, um, next size up, next size down? There's two. What's the white one for? That's the white one. Four to eight is white. Four to eight. So you, so this one's for your piecing to your applique and then you've got a one for bigger needles for embroidery needles and tapestry and things. So please have a look at that and then if you still need help, we'll, we'll talk. And I'm not trying to fob you off, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it as well as what the video does today. So there we go. I'm done. Wouldn't it be nice, to, nice, nice, nice to make um, brooches for everyone for Christmas? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be nice? There you go. So there's your little ginger flower. So you can add more petals if you want. I think the ones on my cord have got eight. But six is looking rather good. And then when you you can starch them or tack them onto your background and you can get the petals to sit down. And you can put little French knots on. There you go. Those gorgeous, do you have the gorgeous ginger flowers that are so long and they kind of go up and over and they hang down the other way as well? Fun, fun. A lot of it will come down to the colours that you use. And when you first do this, you'll find that they feel that they feel a little bit unstable. Um, so if you if you're tacking them onto a quilt, that will all stabilise when it goes onto the background. If you decide that you want to make them into a brooch, what I would what I would suggest is make yourself a nice bagged out leaf, like we've been doing lots of stuff at the moment, and have that quite stiff sitting behind the um, the flower, so the leaf's going to sit up. A little bit taller and then you've got a backdrop and a contrast for it to sit against. Um, the ruched ones like on the our ruched wait 
I have just done that all without you looking at me, haven't I? I'm so sorry. I did this. <laughs> so you've got a leaf sitting up behind on your shirt. I need to drink more coffee, sorry. So it's, it's sitting up here, so it's nice and stiff and stable, and it's gonna be a little bit wonky until you tack it onto something else. I wouldn't suggest hitting it with a glue gun. I, w I wouldn't. Stick with, the, stick with the plan. Put that there. Okay, now, what I was gonna say, um, brooches for Christmas, and if you've got silk, if you've got silk sitting in the cupboard that you haven't used, get it out and use it with all those little mill those little mill beads, get it out and use it. Um, and these ones, so the ones that we have on the glasses case, and there's some of these on this quilt as well. And this is going, this will be in the pattern for the girls on a quilter's life. That will make beautiful brooches as well. Okay, so lots, lots and lots to do. Now I, have we got time? What's the time, Steve? 337. I've got time. I've got time. not like we're going clubbing or anything tonight, is it? Not that I would have on a Tuesday night. You would have. Me? You. Yes. Yes. It's just depressing, isn't it? Think of all the money you've saved. Just a little bit. Okay. I want to do... I have to do these um, these for you for the website. Look. What fabric? Well, I don't want to use this one because that's what we used for the fans. Can you just see if I've got any lattice out there on the shelf? Like a, they really want to be the black lattice or I might have the cream lattice out there. We could just use the cream lattice to make one. So these kits will be up again tomorrow. I've got to cut a heap of these because these ran out as well. No, that's not true. I had to get a big wad of them off to Natasha in the UK and I used up all my stock. That is actually the truth. So this one has been kept because it shows me what needs to go in a kit. So this is what you are going to get in a kit for this one or any that we do. Ah, <laughs> Jill. Jill. Uh, that's very, very funny. Yes, Pauline, I do have steamer seam. It is uh, sitting with a photo, sitting with a photo, it's going up. And Steve's putting up a stabiliser and batting section and it will go under there. If it's not already. Yeah. Did I send you the steamer seam photo? Good question. It's a good question. I don't think I did because I haven't done the weight. But yes, we do have steamer seam. If you are really desperate for some and you're placing an order or whatever, just email it to me and I will get it out for you tomorrow. No, that's not true, Thursday. Um, but yes, we do have it in stock because it goes into it goes into the origami kits as well. It goes in these. You get your little piece in here to put in the centre with your fabric. So I know there is plenty in the building. Alright, so I am just going to copy this kit. That's good, Barb. It's not it's not on my YouTube, Barb. It's actually there's a link through the Chandler's Cottage website where you where you bought your um, or if you haven't, it's where you can buy your needle threader. So it's in there. So it's not on my YouTube. If you like, I can get Steve to email you the link. But um, yeah, it's on the website where we where we sell them. Okay. 
Okay, so let me just chop. Okay. Yeah. Are you doing that, Steve? You're so good. What? <laughs> there you are. Yes, Barbara, that is an awesome idea. Of course you could use the petals for your frangipani flowers. If you were going to, what I would do is probably make them just a little bit wider at the base. And then like the other flowers that I know you know how to do, gather them up a little at the bottom. Um, but white on one side and uh, yellow on the other, oh yeah, that would be lovely. Uh, yep, Steve's, Steve's on that barb. I'm sure we can do that for you. And then for everyone else, we will make sure we get the steamer seam up. That's given me four pieces. I'm going to use four. Uh, two inside and two out. I am going to, very ungraciously, steal these two out of the kit. Should I read the instructions, everybody? What do you think? Take one of the and make a mark. Ooh, it's a, probably a really good idea that I read the instructions. Take one of the outer purse squares. Mark down three inches from what will be the top edge of the purse on the right side of the fabric. Center and adhere. Oh, goodness me, it's all on. Okay. So, just get my board back. Is it pouring rain up there? Oh, well, that is a, that is a complete change of events, isn't it, Barb? It's usually pouring down here, and you've usually got the sunshine. Now we need to find, need to find our blue side. So, and then we need to mark down three. I did try to impress you all and bring my small in with me. Obviously, there are still a few technical issues. Oh, here it is. So we need to find the center on our squares and the squares that you get are five and a half. So we're going to go two and three quarters in. And then we're going to mark three inches down. And then we're going to center a little bit of whisper wedge that comes in the pack. If you decide to just buy the charms and use your own fabric, um, then if you've got a little bit of adhesive violin or something like that, anything like that's going to be fine. So that's now on there. Now we're going to pop our pallum. Again, this comes in the kit and again, it's one of those things that will go up. I would, I'm going to be honest with you and say next week. I'm not going to say this week. We'll just see how things pan out. Um, yeah, but it will go up in stabilizers and batting. One of the great things that's happening at the moment is our very flash Australia Post account that we're being able to set up. And what that means is we now can send you out at a reasonable price batting and interfacing because it's based on weight, not volume. So that's going to make a huge difference to all of us. It's going to be good. This is the one that's got my little piece of stabilizer on. So we've put that on. Uh, then we're going to install our magnet back. Wow. So we'll grab our little pussy cap here. So, this is our 
This is our little stud and this is the back of our snap and that's the little washer that's going to sit. You see that okay? That's going to sit at the back. Now we've all got out of, <laughs> we've all got out of practice doing this because this is what we used to use all the time before we had our sew on magnetic snaps. <laughs> But I must say, this doesn't stress me out as much as putting them onto the front of a bag that I have spent six hours making. Which kind of, kind of used to have the same feel as putting buttonholes onto a shirt after making a whole shirt. So this is where I want my stud to go. Remember we popped on our, um, our stabiliser at the back and that's under our pallet. So I've come in again to halfway and down three inches. And then that is where the two little prongs are going to go. So we're just marking where the prongs are going to go. And then we will grab a really sharp pair of scissors. Um, I probably, in another life, would have for you the perfect tool, like a tailor's awl. Hey, Steve, I need my little pairs of scissors. I don't know what happened. I had a stack of stuff ready to bring in little spiky ones. They come in pink and teal and I have failed at the setup today. Completely failed at the setup. Okay, we're going to do that in a tick and Steve comes back. And then after we've done that, so you pop these through and then the washer goes on the back. Then, 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 then. We're going to take our frame, strips, that's them, thank you, one little one there, just a little nick in there, uh, Jenny no Flynn today, it was Flynn Thursday, I didn't know, I wasn't sure if our youngest uh, viewer was watching today. A little bit more. There we go. I do. I do have to say a big thank you to um, the girls that did join up for the applique sample on Saturday. That is just lovely, and uh, a couple of them are in the UK and in Scotland, and so now I know that our little community is an international one and that's just going to be lovely for the Facebook group as well that runs for it. Okay, so I've put, popped the prongs through to the other side, popped the washer over the top and flattened out the little prongs and that's all nice and secure on there. All right, I haven't done this for so long, I am literally reading the instructions. Take your frame sleeve strips with each one, join short ends together to form a loop. So we are going to do this, see that like that, but we're going to do it on the machine, yeah we're going to do it on the machine. So they're going to go together like that, so we need to create those and they're going to sit as the sleeves. bits to sit through for the frame. There they go. Right. Bear with me and I will get the machine up. Now, whoever it was that I can't remember now said, I can't work it out. Hopefully this will solve it, but also I really just wanted to include it today as well because we are going to put all of these little frame packs up on the website on their own um, without fabric so so that you can you can just grab them and make them up if you want to for presents. Um, I think think that will be really nice. I'm just wondering if we're going to come back and do them again in the next couple of weeks on the Love and Hugs. The Love and Hugs demos. 
But yeah, don't forget to join up Love and Hugs if you want to. If you're wondering who else, who else, who else does Love and Hugs? Lynette Anderson, Helen Stubbings, Janelle Kent, Natalie Bird, Kathy Doherty, Monica Paul. Um, Leanne Kell, Marg Lowe. Oh, now I'm, I'm losing. I'm losing the plot now. There are sixteen of us. Karen Styles. So there might be some names there that you recognise. So there's lots and lots of different styles and talent, and so much content on there. Okay, one. So now what we need to do, so we've formed our loop, we need to press this open, just so it sits nice, we'll get that open, and then we're going to turn it right side out, and we're going to keep says one and three quarters. Yep. So we're going to keep that seam that I've just sewn at the back so that when we fold it in half to use it as a sleeve for our bag furniture, um, that seam is actually concealed underneath. So we just need to give that a little press. And then I'll do the other one. I mean, you can whip these up so, what do I do? Sorry. Well, you can whip these up so fast with a piece of fabric. But if you have the time, if you have the time and the inkling at the moment, you can just make them that little bit more special. You might want to sew together a whole heap of little squares that you couldn't part with to make up your, um, your purse squares, if you wanted to. You might like to grab some woven fabric or some linen and do some embroidery or there's some sashiko onto it you might want to do some little paper pieced hexagons or some little shapes applicated onto squares to use so just have a think about that but what i would suggest is that you try try one first just with fabric so that you get an idea where every, everything sits when you've made it up because you can see here on the front you get triangles that fold down. On the back, you're going to have just a plain house shape. But with that in mind, if these fold down, you might want to concentrate and do a little row of hexagons along this edge, rather than one that's going to get hidden up underneath the folds. So I think it would be good to try, try one first, just with the pattern or the kit. Um, we, won't, we won't pop the pattern up on its own because it really just doesn't make sense to do unless you've got the frames. So that's why they're just going to come and pretty much the patterns for free in these little packs with the charm squares. Okay. Now what we need to do is take your prepared purse bit from the outside, which is neither that one, like that without the magnet Lisa, without the magnet, it says without the magnet. Let's just check the, oh yeah, like that. They are not the same size. Did I get a little bit, oh, I did get a bit carried away, I'll fix that up in a minute. So we take this one and it's got a little diagram here that tells you to space out the sleeves. So it says to leave half half an inch, so we'll leave half an inch and one sits there like that. 
it looks really complicated, these little purses, but they're actually really easy to do. Okay, one in here. Linda's here. Hello, Linda. Catherine Dyer's here. It's like you all snuck in when I wasn't looking. Steve? Yes. I need a bigger table. Do you? Yeah. I need the big one. <laughs> I need the big one from work. What about if we get the one that's out in the warehouse we're not using at the moment? Um, because we can't open up that's got the machines on it. Oh, yeah. Can I have that one? I think you can put it up to waist height like this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Done. That was a bit easy, wasn't it? Pin or tack in place. Done. Place the two outer prepared squares right sides together and sew around three sides, leaving the top open. So this is three inches down here, so I know that's got to go there with that very generous look at that my goodness how bad is that let's just not even talk for a minute because everyone will just be speechless I did that anyway holy moly professional uh, so see it would be nice to tack these on because I'm not going to but because we're not sewing that bit yet we're literally going to put these squares together and bag it out Hello Fiona, how are you today? Hello Kate. Is anyone wagging work? Just a question, just a question. Because Lisa's not on today from Alice Springs, so you know, I'm just sort of asking anyone else's um, wagging work. And these are our two lining pieces. So I'm guessing now we're going to do this, yep, with the lining and the outside. If you have a machine that is a little bit light on your foot pressure, then you will want to use your walking foot. I would say. So let's just do these. We'll pop our two lining pieces together. So Steve, we've got to get um, six of these up, I think. Mm -hmm. So there's three. There's three fan colours. There's gold, gold, silver, and antique. Yeah, and the same in the cats. I believe so. So we've got everything. It's just photos, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Are they on the old website? No. No, they're not. Did you see that box at the door when you got home? Oh, yeah. That's the other one from that Ash bought. So that's mm -hmm. got the other... The other exciting things. If I said to you, metallic gold zips, not just the zip bit, the whole cloth, metallic gold, that's what's at the front door. <laughs> so, um, and a few other gorgeous, gorgeous ones, but it is continuous zip. So what we're going to do is um, just learn together, which I'm sure will be fine, to take a length of zip, cut it into three sections, put the ends on and put the pulls on and I've bought three different beautiful zip pulls, they're all different shapes and I thought, I thought one good place to start 
with those would be with the Melba stripe because it's got the large, medium and small sections to the stripes. So we're actually going to cut them out and go large, medium and small purses with them. I don't know what you dream about at night, but that was, that was kind of what I was dreaming about. Um, and up talking with um, Viv about it. So Vivian is my go-to, um, she's my finder and my spotter and so I give her all these weird wonderful ideas and she makes the magic happen. I'm sure her plan in life was not to be my bag furniture finder and designer but as fate would have it she ended up or I ended up with my stand next to her at Birmingham Festival of Quilts and the rest is history <laughs> and then Jonathan Coleman walked past and then he introduced me to Natasha and it all just you know it's amazing how things happen She's also the one creating miracles, getting us those drop dead gorgeous scissors at the moment out of Asia. It's it's proving it has proven a little bit of a challenge, uh, but that's what we're working on. Okay, I've done that. What's next? What's next? Place the lining inside the outer and sew right around the top edge. Okay, okay, okay. Place the lining. Should we clip these? I don't think we will. Not the light. Oh, maybe just a little bit. Okay. So your lining, your lining could be anything and I think when you've got the time at the moment like you do, it is a really good chance to try different things out on your sewing machines or with your fabric pens or if you've bought the fabric that goes through a printer. All those things, you now have the time to try them, don't leave them in the cupboard and try them. So for me, if this is a little Chinese coin purse, if it's a little bit like a Chinese fortune cookie this is when I should actually stop and go into the other room and pull out the manual and learn. Re sorry, I'm a dealer. Refamiliarize myself with doing beautiful um, alphabet stitch outs on my banana because this would be the beautiful spot to go through and actually have stitched out someone's name with a good, good luck charm saying or something inside on the lining of your purse. That That would be very cute. Something about money, seeing it's a, a coin purse, a charm purse. Maybe something out of a fortune cookie. Definitely not out of a Christmas bonbon, but out of a fortune cookie. Okay, so this now, I'm going to carefully put this in because I've got my pins in there with those, with the sleeve. Oh, Melanie! Cheapers. Gmail, you've pulled me up. Thank you. It is what everyone does when they're talking too much. I'm going to do that when I've when I've turned it through. Who gets Melanie gets the lollipop? Didn't leave the gap in the lining. It is in the instructions. If I was reading the instructions, do you know what Emma says every time that she doesn't leave the gap in the lining in a handbag? She actually tells me, and I don't know if it's true or not, that she has done it on purpose. Because she likes to give it a really good press and set the seam first, and then she will unpick it, and the seam has a crease in it with perforated holes. So it's really easy to go back and get a perfect uh, sew up the gap line. That's what she says. So I would like to run with that today, but it's such a little purse, I don't think I'll get away with it. Okay, I might bring those pins up here now. Are you uploading stuff now, Steve? Mm -hmm. Wow, what you uploading? What you putting up? Needles. Needles? As in hand needles? Uh, embroidery, patchwork, applique. Wow, great. So by the time I'm finished, 
today or tonight there'll be all of our clover needles uh, will be up on the site too. That Facebook's gone down again. The girls just love it when when I get to the end of a show and I actually can't turn the show off. So you live now? <laughs> I'm live, but oh. it's 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 becoming not live. That is the um, oh. is the challenge. I don't know. If I can get no, it's just not, just not quite. The bag's just not, the purse isn't quite big enough. That's okay. Are you all doing your click and collect um, at Bunnings? Because uh, I got my seed potatoes to put in yesterday. I think I'm a little late, but it has been really cold. So we had the best batch of potatoes last year, and it was because I'd left a pack in the cupboard too long, and I just threw them in. I bet you this year that I've gone and purposely bought potatoes, seed potatoes. They won't be as good. Uh, Jill, yes. To answer your question, yes, I do believe your mirror will fit in one of these and that you've read my mind about what I was going to do for that. It's going to be sad when Summer Palace is gone, Steve. Not reprinting? Nope. I know. No, no reprint. We're going to do... We are doing... Uh, three prints imperial garden um, with a panel but no we would love to stay in chat longer with summer palace but imperial garden and silk road um, highlands and the old country await i don't like it when a fabric runs out it's like a like a baby leaving. So I better ask for a quilt now then. You want a quilt in Summer Palace? Yeah. There's no black dragons left. Green dragons. Green dragons? Sorry, jade dragons. Oh, jade dragons, thank you very much. Okay. Are you going to consult on the type of design you want? Can do. Might pick a pattern off the website. <laughs> no, if I'm making you a quilt, no, I have to design it. Too easy. Actually, make my life easier to choose the dragons because the pattern's got the seam allowance around the dragons in it. Did you know that? No. So the, the lines around the octagonal dragons yep. are exactly a quarter of an inch. Ah. Fun fact. Okay. More you know. In, in, inside intel. So if the girls are looking in needles and pins now, if they keep refreshing, will they actually see um, no. things happen? Or do you have to do an upload import thing? No, I have to run through with you and do all the prices. Oh, true. But um, as soon as the prices are done, they'll all pop up. Okay. So, how much... Our coin purse frames are seven fifty, aren't they? And trinkets are 6 Thanks, Mel. You got me. So, trinket. Ah, uh, Fiona! 
Thanks. Where are you? I'll get Steve to pick up with his official delivery. <laughs> Me said she's got the seed potatoes. <laughs> Trinkets are six twenty-five. Yep. You haven't got the coins up yet. The coin purse? Mm. No. No, because I've got to, because we don't have many silver ones, so I've got to stock take them. I'm getting very nervous about the next step because the next step would require me to drink more coffee. And I'm, can you tell I'm a bit ditzy? I'm on a sugar free diet. And the brain, it just doesn't work in the afternoon. If, if you're not, if you're not having sugar. Um, but yeah, it was, it was time to step up. It was time to step up for my team in a quilter's life. Because I promised them the world this year and then I went off and had two major surgeries that kind of slowed things down a little bit. So I'm going gung-ho now. It's all, in, it's all in the name of research for the club. I'm just doing it for the club. It's, it's, um... <laughs> any benefit I get out to it is just a bonus it's just about uh, trying to do the right thing to try things out um, I'm, I'm not sure that it's such a good idea I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, recommend it see oh look at that see that now look how well um, that's all sitting because it had been pre-sewn no oh that's it Fiona is the wife of a potato grower. Oh, Fiona, we've got to do this. We've got to do it. I should make up, um, I have a really nice, okay, there's a combination here. We're going to get Felicity's Archery Hardening Potato Salad Recipe, fully endorsed and supported by Stephen and Philip Chandler. Do you remember that? I do. <laughs> yeah, he does. Do you remember that? Yeah. Um, and we're going to match that up with the recipe and Fiona's potatoes. We're going to make it happen. We have TNT and the technology and Australia Post. We can make this happen. And then we might use it. We might do a craft and cook. Rob's bought me this super, super long Ethernet cord so I can film craft and cook shows myself. Because uh, we can't have Miss Kate, of course. So it's all very complicated. There you go. So that's the outside and that's the inside. And they look it looks more complicated because I use the same for inside and out. But now we can push all of this in. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry, going back, Melanie. Yes, now that I've turned it through and I've got that beautiful edge... I do need to sew up my, my bit in there. Yes, Felicity, the hot potato salad. Okay, Fiona. Fiona is getting, starting to worry me, and I feel um, if there wasn't lockdown, we'd have you on as a feature guest because she says she can make ice cream from potatoes. Okay. Okay, I'm putting my food tech hat on because of the starch as well. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll pay that. I've had, I've had avocado, I've had avocado ice cream, and it, this amazing um, modern Mexican Spanish, Mexican Spanish restaurant in Houston. I had corn, corn ice cream with blue corn wafers, and wait for it, wait for it, sugared Mexican ants on top. Yeah, I just had to throw that in, but I did. Because when in Rome, Meg, what are we putting vodka in? <laughs> oh, Meg's moved on to what you use potatoes for, making vodka. Okay, okay, it's all it's all going downhill now, and so it should at this time of day. There we go. What happens now? I'm hoping I can do it because I haven't had sugar. Thread the purse frames onto the sleeves of the purse. You will then be able to pull the magnetic charm downwards to close the purse and connect it with the magnet on the front. So, this is what requires sugar, which I do not have. 
<clears throat> sit one like this and sit one like this and then this guy has to go on through both of these so this goes through here and then this goes through that wasn't that complicated I did it there you go right now we put these on to one side Oh lordy lordy, if Natty News watching, she'll go, it better not be complicated because she's got to do it on UK TV, shopping channel, the craft store, after a long drive. And then what happens is these fold down and you pull, no, nah, I didn't get it right, <laughs> that this has to pull down, nope, didn't get it right, let me go back. You want to do it, don't you? No, I'm just... You I'm want to do it. I can see you want to do it. So when Cass and I drew this up, we spent ages trying to draw it up. Right, let me tell it out again. That goes there, Steve, right? And then this goes... I know it works. I've done it a thousand times. This... This goes through here, like that. And then this goes through here. Maybe I'm making it too complicated. I think I'm making it too complicated. Over, under, under, over, over. I really think I was making it too complicated. And then that pulls down. You get that right for me for a minute. I can't, I just, I can't, I can't. I need to talk to the girls before we go. How pathetic am I? Sugar. I need sugar. I need sugar. So, whilst... Well, Steve's getting that to fix me. What are we going to talk about on Thursday? Uh, we are going to make sure that you have up um, as a download pattern for $9 the book cover so that you can make any size book cover like we did the other day you want. Emma was very, very impressed with the one that we did for um, the work diary with the bees. So that one's done. So I'm going to get this done. This pattern as a download will be $9 because it's just such great value to be able to cover any book. But again, if you're in a quiltist life, it's part of your $10 a month membership. We are also... Are you right? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's making it work. Right. Also, we will get these up. And it does work if you've had sugar to actually put the charms on. How silly am I? So they will go up as well. We've got red ones, green ones, and purple ones. The red ones will at least go up this week. And then on top of that, not just having the kits with the fans on this week, um, we're also going to get up these little charms, these little cat charms, as well as the fan ones. And they come with their own little pattern. So this just comes with it. So you've got the whole instructions that I was just using in the kit in with the furniture. And that goes for all of the bag furniture that we're putting up. It all comes with the pattern. Even the, well, you know, the the, um, the handbag shopping tote ones are already up. We've got a stack more brown and navy blue in as well, so they're up. So all of all of the bag frames and everything will come um, with instructions, so you can just head straight to your stash. Uh, this one's also going up, thanks to Therese, on to A Course Life probably tonight. Oh, thanks, Steve. Why? I don't know why. Oh, it's so cute. Thank you. So um, that will go up. So this will go up. Is this already up as a paid download? The three different types of kits are up. Yes. But not as the pattern. Okay, so we still need to get this up as a paid download. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get this up as a paid download. But the three, there's four kits up now for oh, yeah, sorry, just four. new ones up as well. Um, and the pink cushions are up as kits. Yep, Melba and some of Yep, so there's two up and they're also up as a paid download. Yep. And a hard copy pattern. Yep. So we have been doing stuff. I believe it's $9 for digital download, $10.50 for physical. Yep. And 
Yeah, the whole the whole thing about downloads, if you are having trouble finding where you've downloaded your pattern to, just ring us and ask and we can talk you through where it is because it depends on how your computer's been set up. So there might be a little button up the top to click. There might be down the bottom on the bottom toolbar to click. But it's downloading it onto your laptop or your computer for you. So we can, if you have trouble, we can talk you through where to find it. Just people are going to find it if they haven't done it before, really, isn't it? Yep. But it's it's more now to buy. What we needed to do was um, look after people in terms of hard copies and and download ones. But you'll see there is a difference in price because it's cheaper for you to buy the pattern now if you download it and print it yourself. And if you print, if you download it yourself, you don't even need to print it. You can just keep it on your laptop and you can read the pattern from your laptop. Yes. Yes, that's right. Is that right? Yes. So you'll see that printed copies are more, but get this, the way that we've set it up, they're free post. So they include the postage. So you might pay $9 for a printable download What's a good example? 11.50 or something like that, whatever for um, a print for a printed one to come in the mail, but they're free post, and that's kind of happened because when we send just one pattern out, it's the cost of sending a letter. But then if you combine that with other things in your order, it was actually really hard for us to get it to work from a postage point of view. So the easiest thing to do is make the patterns free post, so that if you buy one, it includes the post. If you buy it with fabric and everything else. You're, you're only paying for sending the fabric. And that sounds a really cool deal now that I've said it like that. It made our lives easier to set up the website, but that's actually a really cool deal. Um, Stephen made it work because he has had sugar and food. Look at that. So there's our little, there's our little putty cat. And so he's mag magnetized and he goes onto the little press stud down the bottom and then that folds down and then you open it. It opens up like that, and you can put your put your coins inside. So I'll just pull this down again. Oh, it's so cute! Yeah, I want this with sashiko, or I want a little band of little um, paper pieced octagons. See what I mean about the back? So you've got a lot more room on the back. Bernadette, you go and get that second jab, girl. You go, 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 go and get it. I'm just seeing your message. So you can fit a lot more on here. So maybe a sashiko design here in a circular one. And then on this side, you could just have a little row of something along the bottom. Too many options. Too many options. So that was a little bit over the place today, wasn't it? <laughs> but hopefully you can see what I mean. There was just so many things that I wanted to cover off for people, go through, show you what we're working on. There's lots and lots of stuff. Um, and we just we feel like we're in that transition phase and on top of that not being able to have the door open we're even more conscious of getting a lot more things onto the site for you to see now please remember as well love and hugs tomorrow i will as i said try and get it to stream tomorrow night through chandler's cottage facebook and love and hugs but to cover yourself off try and get yourself onto love and hugs from Australia stitch along Facebook page you'll need to ask for permission to get in and the girls will the girls in admin will organize that for you Natalie Bird and the girls um, and then if we can't get it to do that what we'll do is we'll film it onto there and we'll tag across we'll, we'll make sure it happens for you safest thing to do so you don't miss it as you happen is join up to love and hugs and I'm, I reckon you'll get a lot out of it it's really good fun so that's going to happen every evening for the next two weeks not necessarily live but we'll try and make it live so um your father's forgotten we're live on facebook right now and he's ringing me that's just so funny um and then i'll see you again at two o'clock on thursday all right love you all now we have a challenge on our hands again because again facebook's playing up so i'm going to leave you with the quilt to have a look at and i'm going to go and grab my laptop and see if i can get it to end all right, and you have a lovely evening, and I will see you tomorrow on Love and Hugs, and then I'll see you on Thursday. All right, bye. I can't believe your father. Probably calling you to remind you to say something. <laughs> About? Yeah. Well, to say what? I don't, I don't know. know. Who knows?
So what happens is if you don't, which I didn't, 